What's going on, Paisanos? V here. Coming at you, well, with another marker wash today. You know, Battle of Chaos is such a weird set. Like, insanely weird. Think about it. It got a lot of great cards if you play the right deck. I don't mean cards, I mean like one to two cards. Stellar Rares are mostly for collection, though they could have value because collectors are like crazy like that. And an Ultra Rare is the most expensive card in the set? Dark Witches right now at a Battle Cast is roughly around $595. A copy. It's an Ultra Rare. Uh, not Starlight Rare. Blue Eyes Red Dragon's not bad for Blue Eyes. Then again, Blue Eyes. So Dark Magicians not bad for Dark Magicians. Then again, Dark Magicians. Illusion of Chaos is such a great card. Even though Eva just got hit in Drytrons. Once again, you see what I'm trying to say? It's not bad. And someone will probably comment, well, V, you know, I like playing my Dark Magician deck. Cool. Artifact Scythe, uh, full board, uh, Adventurer. Like, I'm not saying your deck's going to get blown out, but you're in an uphill battle from turn one. I will say, though, Battle of Chaos definitely still has some great cards in it. Obviously, Garden Chimera is a great card. A price going back down in value, which you want, because the cards I've seen play. With the Albash Structure coming out in April, this will be a two of. Remember that. You're going to need to get two of these if you're looking to play Albash. Now, if you're looking to play Sword Soul, I personally like the more stronger Tangy build. Sword Soul Sinner Sovereign is a phenomenal card that you're going to need as a one of. And the price point is tanking. The pre sale price of this card was roughly around $50. It is going down. Once again, there are still great cards in Battle of Chaos. Flunderies. Uh, Dunamorphius, I don't know nothing about them, but evidently they look cool. The price points ain't showing they're good, but you know, that's Yu-Gi-Oh. Like, this is not a terrible set. It's just not a blowout set. In fact, I would argue the subset, Grand Creators, is infinitely better. Looking at Adventures and Grand Creators, they are almost half for a lot of deck cores out right now in the game. And of course they are, they're worth a lot of money. I mean, the Water Enchantress used to be around 200, it's about roughly around 185. Right at Aramazir, roughly around 200, now it's 140. So the prices are starting to calm down. Will they continue to go down? No, let me explain. The CRs obviously were all blown because players like myself would pay top dollar for CRs. We want to get it, we want to get it fast, and we don't want to wait, so we did get it. Now, for everybody else that got the Ultra Rares, no big deal. The problem is, everyone still wants the Ultra Rares. Think about it. There are 70 listings of War Enchantress of the Temple. 70 listings. The price point was around 50 bucks, and it's still at $50. What does that tell you? No matter how many you put on the market, people are still going to want it. I will say the Grand Creators is a great set still, because Torrential Tribute and Sound Strike are great higher rarity upgrades. Etelli as well. The best one, I think, is still Torrential Tribute. That's why it's the most dominant one, because, <coughs> because it's the highest rarity of Torrential Tribute. And the things that aren't even good about the set, like Punk and Exorcist, that are really not seeing play, are still really, really, really good. Good for artwork, and still, a lot of players don't know what they do, so the players playing these deck cores have a massive advantage. Of course, there's also Insectors, which I don't know why they put them in this set, but it is in this set, so there's that as well. It's a phenomenal set, and I think if you could choose between Battle Chaos and Grand Creators, you'd be insane not to say Grand Creators. Red Star Dragoon is a card that's going to be used in, once again, April with Albas. It's going to be easily cheated out. The fact that they made a Starlight is hilarious when you realize the fact that, oh, wait a minute, this came around the same time as Phoenix Enforcer, and Dragoon was out the door. Now, I, st I still think Dragoon's going to come back into the game, but not in the way as it used to. Red Star Dragoon right now, Starlight Red, by the way, which has been tanking, is roughly around $380. Want an Ultra Rare? Don't worry about it. It's been going up in value for the Ultra Rare Dragoon. That value has the card being roughly around $93 to $95 for Dragoon. Listen, Incredible Ecclesia, unlike any other card in Burst of Destiny, Incredible Ecclesia has not really went down in value. You ever notice that? You know why? Simple. There's a chance it could be used in the Albash structure deck. If anyone's saying right now, I, I think someone commented, I believe it was on my Instagram, Albas won't be good or whatever. Albas is insane. Unlike a lot of decks in this game that need their turn one, Albas plays on your turn as well. The only thing it does in turn one is set up. And it doesn't necessarily always need to go into the extra deck to do that. It can literally go into the extra deck on your turn, which makes it ideal for a lot of players right now in the meta playing Artifact Psy and locking you out of your extra deck. With that said, Incredible Cleese, it can help you get out. Um, you know, so Albas. Which is really good because, once again, it wants to do that. Now, will this card be used? I don't know. But I do know is no one's selling this card because of the potential chance of it being used. 
So I think Virtual World is a great deck quarter buy right now. One is she th two Italy's at three, which Virtual World struggled forever. Like Italy makes this deck a lot more consistent. Uh, the only thing is, uh, Pod's Eyes is only to uh, only a, a one of. So there's that. If it was two of, I don't think Virtual World would be as upset, but. The one of desires does hurt a little bit. But other than that, I think Virtual is great. I mean, one of the most expensive cards, Queen Long, is also a common if you want to buy the cheaper rarity. Like, a lot of them have already been reprinted, including the big boss monster, Shen Shen, which is 20 cents. If you want to get Virtual World right now, I don't blame you. It is dirt cheap. Nobody's looking at it right now. And a lot of players don't respect it, despite the fact that this, this deck core itself has recently topped. Alpha the Master of Beast Secret Rare is a card nobody's really caring about, and they should because this card's insane. Now, I don't play birds because I'm not that kind of player, come on. But I will say, for those who do play birds or lyrilists, whatever you want to call it, uh, why aren't you playing this card? This card's insane. You special summon it, it's three K. It's a 3k body, so it can break over your opponent's, um, your opponent's adventure monster. Also, it can bounce cards. Once again, really good. Now, the Ghost Rares lately have been terrible. Like, really bad. Like, Konami, maybe you should work on your Ghost Rares because the last two released are garbage bad. Crystal Clear Wing Single Dragon Ghost Rare would be a great card if it showed any meta play. It doesn't. In fact, how does it feel being second fiddle to Baron de Fleur in your deck where you are the focus card on the box art? Embarrassing. That's how bad it is. They should have made Baron a Ghost Rare, but then again, Baron would have been like 250, and well, you know how that works. Okay. The Winged Dragon and Rock Ghost Rare is, that, once again, another great Ghost Rare. And the price point isn't really doing nothing with it. Why is that? Because you can't play this in the game. I mean, unless you're like a scrub or a new player, not in the same wavelengths, but you know what I'm saying. And you put it in your deck, cool, I guess. Oh, there you did it. It looks really nifty. Um, Realistically, this card was a big yell to every single collector in the game. That's all this was. And I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Cypher Sky Dragon and Obelisk Tormentor um, also get their Ghost Rares. Would it do anything? No, but, you know, it's for collectors. That's why it's there. Once again, these two Ghost Rares have been trashed, but they're meant for collectors. They're not really meant for us. Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion is insane. Think about it. This card stops so many cards in the game. A lot of Yuga players are not respecting this card. And it's crazy to think that this card can do so much more now in this game than ever before. And if you want to get the highest rarity version of Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion, it comes out of Flames of Destruction. If you want a first edition version of this card, you're looking to pay roughly around, let's say, $60 for Ghost Spell and Haunted Mansion each. <laughs> Crazy within this card used to be around twelve dollars a copy. Now, obviously, there's a bunch of cheaper versions of the card. You can get it right over here for as low as three dollars. Uh, ultimately, you're gonna want to get this card because there's a great hand shop in the game. A lot of cards now, especially now, have a huge problem with Ghostbound and Haunted Mansion. Artifact Lancer obviously is one of the best hand shops in the game as well. Like, no doubt in my mind, if you're playing against PK and you open Lancia, you're in a good position. If you play against Sword Souls and you open Lancia, they can say by the detainees because they're not getting all that value. So, Lancia is actually insane right now. The current price point of Artifact Lancia is roughly around $10 a copy. Of course it is. You're going to need three. Abolus of the Gods is another great Starlight Rare, probably the best Starlight Rare in the game for value and playability wise. Uh, I would argue uh, Abolus of the Gods is not only stable in, in price point, but the limited amount of these cards on the market make it so highly wanted and sorted. If you don't have a Starlight Rare version, I'm telling you right now, the price point is not getting any lower any soon. It will only increase. I remember when this card was roughly around $400, spiked all the way to 1000 and now we're looking at Abolus of the Goddess. Uh, we'll see it. We'll say about 1400. I mean, there's different foreign versions, but a little fun thing about um, high remedy cards that also have that collective value. It just, this card's a fine line before be, between competitive and collector, and that's kind of what I am a competitive collector. But looking at Apple's of Boulder, guys, the reason why this card is more valuable in English is because of the collection. Nobody wants to buy a collectible foreign card. This is how it works. That's how the collection market works. Competitively, we, we like foreign cards, but collectively, we don't. So if you want a card that's going to have good value as a, as a competitive collector, and you walk that fine line like I do, you're going to want an English Appaloosa Bow the Goddess. Obviously, if you want it, you want to get Starlight Rare because that's the highest version, but you want it in English so it's easier to sell when you inevitably do sell these cards, if you do. Uh, heroes are a disease. <laughs> And they're, 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 it's eating at me every single day. Comment down below if the hero bug is getting to you. But I will say, Vision of Faris and Increase are definitely cards I've been personally looking at a lot lately. As I contemplate, 
more and more buying into heroes. I will say though, with uh, heroes going to two, it's more of a reason to go. Is it two or three? I think it's a two. I forgot. It doesn't really matter. It's heroes. But what I will say is the vision of Faris and increasing the reprint. Now these cards are secret rare, so I don't know anything higher than what the Konami can already make. And the price points are definitely rising. Increased price points roughly around twenty-two dollars, where Faris is forty-four stable. So if you want to get these cards, uh, you might want to get them before there's not many in the market because they will have only 26 listings each. So, Sorceress is still one of the best decks in the game. Don't get me wrong, they got one new card in this new set, and that's it. And the card's definitely good, but you have to give up Baron instead of going instead of going to Baron, go with this card. Or this card's better in the mid game, but you want to play you don't want to play Sorceress in the mid game because you're playing Sorceress. You want to end the game early. You gotta get with the dilemma. I will say, though, looking at Token Collector is definitely a card that's really good against Sword Souls. And if you don't have this card, and you want the highest rated version of your Ultra from the sneak preview version of this card, yeah, it's going to be around 11 bucks for Token Collector. Yep. <laughs> then we have Silent Judgment out of OTS Tournament Pack 12, a card in which is insanely good. I mean, look at, the, look at the market responding to this card. Players are slowly realizing this card's almost needed. In the super fast-paced meta we currently are in right now, Solemn Judgment can make or break a game. Going first opening Judgment and going full combo ensures that your full combo stays on board. It's pretty good. Solemn Judgment at the OTS Solar Pack 12 right now has a price point roughly around $140 for the Ultimate Rare. Yes, there's other versions, but that's the highest one. Once again, if you're playing a combo-based deck and you go all off and you set your Judgment, think about it. What's the best card your opponent can do to break your board? Dark Roller No More? And Forbidden Droplet. And if that Forbidden Droplet doesn't send a trap card, well, the game is basically over. If it does send a trap card, that means they're playing Elish. Congratulations, you're still in a good position. <laughs> Nevertheless, Sandra is a phenomenal card against a lot of these decks. And the minute this card resolves, your opponent ultimately scoops. Then we have Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. Whoo, there's so many copies. Okay, let's look at Ultimate Red because my favorite version. Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, Ultimate, Ultimate Red, OTS Slam Pack 5 has been spiking in, you know. About a month, past month, two months. Uh, the price on this card used to be around fairly around $120, and now its new price point is roughly around $196. Well, why is that? Simple. Creators, uh, well, adventurers, the grand creators. You get what I'm saying. You ghost ogre faithful adventure. That's what you do. You, you ghost ogre. You pop that bad boy in the graveyard, and one card stops the entire engine in your opponent's deck, especially if it's CR. Ghost ogre soul is definitely a needed card, especially the fact that it's psychic. Why is that important? Well, if you're playing, let's say, I don't know, uh, if you're playing uh, against, uh, you're playing PKs and you run three e tellies you can e telly Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit. This card's effect can be used on the field. e telly face in defense mode, it's 1800 defense. So you got 1800 booty, Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, that can pop on the field. A little icing on the cake, if your deck gets crazy like that, you could use it as a light target because it's light. Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit is definitely another phenomenal hand trap. As you can tell, the hand traps in this game are getting a lot more harder to tell which is good, which is not good. They all look amazing, and they all have different purposes as why they are used in this game. Ghost Ogre Snow Rabbit is definitely a card a lot of you can play is going to start playing just because of adventures alone, let alone other cards in the game. Anyway, I really appreciate you guys watching my video. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed already, hit the like button. Comment down below. It's your boy V. And you boys have a great day.